Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Lee J. Cobb as star of The Bet, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Mr. Lee J. Cobb in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Haunted... Yes, I'm haunted. It's a year now, and I can't erase the memory of that precipice I've ever nearly stepped from. That darkness into which I almost plunged. Or maybe I took the plunge and I'm in it now, in the dark. It doesn't usually happen in my business. But what's the use of talking about it? You'd only say I'm too susceptible. And I'd say you're right, I am susceptible. To faces and places, to women's faces. One woman's face. And to lost, dark places on what I call the rim of the world. Places like Sierra Leone, Saigon, Balso. Places like Trinidad. But you won't get it from reading atlases and maps. If you read, for instance, that the seasons of Trinidad are regular, wet from May to January... Dry from the end of January to May, the average annual rainfall, 63 inches. You won't understand how I saw it when I landed at Port of Spain in April, the dry season. I remember it was a day so clear and bright that it was a world under glass. And I liked it. I liked the harbor, cathedrals, the old streets, the dry, spiced air and that little shop I wandered into to get away from the blaze of the sun. I'd heard she went there. Siam Brahmahari shop of Hindu antiquities. Hello? Anybody here? Certainly. Good afternoon. I am Siam Brahmahari. Oh, it's dark. I didn't see. Yes, I live here like a mole. And when the clock rings, it brings me customers. Every time. What can I show you? Well, I... Thought I'd look around. It's a pleasure. Look as you wish. You're a stranger in Port of Spain. I landed today. And you're an artist. Well, how did, how did you... That's a sketch pad you carry. Oh, yes. Yes, I You'll paint. find Trinidad charming to paint until the rains come, Mr... Scott Turner. Mr. Scott Turner, yes. It's lovely until next month, then the green rain until the first of the year. Well, that sounds paintable, the rain... By the way, I believe you know... It's Mrs. the rain? Oh, no. It comes down so there's no... Uh, pardon, please. Mrs. Barton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Siam. Did my Shiva get here? Yesterday, Mrs. Barton, I took him out of his straw nest. Yesterday, a beautiful white jade Shiva. I, I'll bring him in. Thank you. Oh, but first, first, this is Mr. Turner, a newcomer and an artist. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Talk to him till I return, Mrs. Barton. I want him to see our Shiva, too. <laughs> well, we have our orders, Mr. Turner. Yes. Uh, what is it, a statue? A small one. It's my hobby. I collect Hindu gods. Do you know about them? Oh, a little. I've been to India. This is one I've wanted a long time. A statuette of Shiva from the dead city of Angkor Wat. It was buried for 3,000 years. Ah, ah, you see? He's small, Mrs. Barton, but... He's perfect. Look, not a blemish. Siam, he's beautiful. Isn't he beautiful, Mr. Turner? The great god Shiva. Yes, he's quite the boy. Two hundred million people believe he controls lightning, thunder, their very lives. Shiva, beloved of women. Yes, he is, isn't he? And beloved by you, Mrs. Barton. Oh, no, no. 
I have my own reason for being attracted to Shiva. Yeah? What's your reason? Don't you remember what Shiva is, first of all? He's the god of destruction, Mr. Turner. And I like that. Destruction. That's the kind of woman I am. <laughs> She liked destruction. <laughs> of course, I knew that already about Ada Barton. She must have loved Trinidad, a place where a casual conversation turns suddenly intense, suddenly dangerous, where you never know the whirlpool under your feet until you're in it. I was in that whirlpool in a second, and I'm still there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I had no difficulty meeting Ada Barton again. You know how colonial cities are the teeming population that belongs and the handful of English, Americans, French, administrators, speculators, painters, planters, who huddle together socially because, well, they're afraid. And even so ungregarious a man as Paul Barton wasn't above inviting a visiting American to his home. But no matter how we'd met, he and I were bound to disagree. So you're an artist, Mr. Turner. <laughs> well, I envy you. It must be pleasant not to have to work for your living. Well, naturally, I don't look at it that way. Paul, for heaven's sake. Oh, but Ada, my dear, surely neither you nor Mr. Turner contend painting is labor, not productive labor. But that's not the point. Well, I think it's a point. And I think painting is productive. Although I must confess that painting seldom produces for the painter comfort such as you have here. I wish it did. More coffee, Scott. Please, Miss Barton. Well, naturally, millions buy my sugar because it's a necessity. A picture on the wall isn't. It is for me, Paul. It is for the millions who buy your sugar, Mr. Barton. At least it's necessary for me to believe it's a necessity to them. A necessity for which they're starved. But I think your difference with me is more personal, Mr. Barton. Oh, now, no, no, wait a minute. You see, I think you envy me. <laughs> I uh, envy you? Because you're a romantic who never found whatever you came here for. This is a beautiful island, Mr. Barton. In the dry season, yes. You've built a beautiful house. And you're married to an extraordinarily beautiful woman. Thank you, Mr. Turner. But because you've pegged your dream to what the morning stock market has to say on the price of sugar, it's all ashes to you. So you resent me, the itinerant artist, symbol of the freedom you lost. Ashes? I love it. I'm a man who likes organization, utility, and there's plenty of romance in sugar. As much as there is in a Portuguese sloop, Java bound, or in the ruined streets of Palmyra, gulls flashing in the sun over Sicily, or in the port of, or in the port of Spain tonight, with its smell of fast-growing things, to a man like me who can claim the whole world because no part of it claims him. You are very persuasive, Mr. Turner. You know what I think? I think you're irresponsible, Mr. Turner, because you haven't the necessary courage to take responsibility. Paul, you're insulting. Maybe, but I put years of hard work into developing this business. And you don't think I've worked? No. No, I don't think you have, and I don't think you can. Why, I'd bet $50,000 that you couldn't stick to a, a useful routine job for two years. What you call a useful routine job? Yes, yes. I'll put up $50,000 that you couldn't stick it out to, uh, say, here. Here, where you think it's so beautiful... Working for me. Paul, don't be ridiculous. You can't buy everything with your money. I have an idea that Mr. Turner is the sort know. of man... I don't know. Maybe he can. What kind of work, Mr. Barton? You can't be serious, Scott. Oh, it would be work that you can do, say, in my laboratory. I've got some things going on tropical diseases in addition to the necessary laboratory work for the sugar, soil tests, things like that. Well, I'm not a technician. Oh, I'd make it easy for you. I'm the technician. All you'd have to do is keep routine records... For two years. For $50,000. That's right, $50,000. Or if you quit, nothing. It's a bet, Mr. Barton. It's a bet. Fi What's that? Hmm, what? That. <laughs> Rain, Mr. Turner. Rain for nine months. Endless, remorseless oceans of romantic rain. <laughs> It'll make it easier for you to... Uh, Stay indoors. Endless, remorseless rain. I liked it at first because it blurred the passage of time. And somehow my job wasn't easy. In the fields around the laboratory, the cane grew up, was cut, grew and was cut. 
But inside the laboratory where I lived day and night, all sound and life came wrapped in the silk and deadly, hypnotic drumming and hissing of rain. The first two months, only one thing bothered me, the petty needling of Paul Barton. We spent our mornings together, he making his tests while I wrote them up for the files. Scarcely a day went by when he didn't say something sharp or bitter. Well, how's the romantic Mr. Turner today, hmm? Can you read any poetry into the smell of aniline dyes? Two years, Scott, two years. You see what you're heading for? A laboratory stoop. And this rain will grow mole in your curly artist lock. <laughs> I guarantee it. Yes, my wife Ada fancies art too, Scott. She buys little things, paintings, statues. But she buys them with money from sugarcane, Scott. Or had you forgotten that? I hadn't forgotten that. I hadn't forgotten Ada. A dangerous woman. And I knew how dangerous. I knew things about her he didn't know. That she liked destruction. And every time he lashed out at me, I knew more. That for her own destructive purposes, she was feeding him this hate of me nurturing it with intention and care. Well, in the tropics, things grow fast. And Ada Barton's purposes grew fast, to full flower. In the afternoons when Paul was out in the cane fields, she began to visit me in the laboratory. He's right. You are getting a speak. Close the door. And a squint. It definitely doesn't become you, Scott. I thought you were going into Port of Spain today. Did I say that? Well, I heard something to that effect, and so did Paul. The roads are swamped, and besides, something's wrong with the car, one of the wires. Oh, you wouldn't know which wire? Well, I don't know what it's for, but if it's broken, the car won't run, I know that. Must you keep working? It isn't very polite of you. This isn't a salon, Ada, and these cultures have to be put away. You know, Scott, this whole business of your bet with Paul shocks me a little. I'm sorry. I mean, it shocks me to see what he's doing to you. I'm shocked to see what you're doing to him, Ada. Don't change the subject. Why do you put up with it? Why do you stay here? Isn't $50,000 an understandable motive to you? Not for a man like you. You must have another motive. Believe me, I haven't. I'm just that crass. Not even me, Scott. You might have been a motive at first. Now I don't compete with Java, the gulls of Sicily. Look, Ada, why don't you give him a break? You don't mind taking his money? Why don't you take his terms, too? He doesn't ask much. Why don't you kiss me, Scott? Ada. Yes. Whose destruction, Ada? Destruction? Yes. Which of us have you marked to destroy? Paul? Or me? For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Mr. Lee J. Cobb in The Bet by Donald S. Ryerson. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Have you invited friends or family to dinner tomorrow night? Then here's a timely suggestion from famed hostess Elsa Maxwell. Welcoming guests with Roma California Sherry is becoming an American custom. My guests compliment me when I serve Roma Sherry with simple hors d'oeuvres or cheese. Roma Sherry served cool is a delicious appetizer before the meal, the perfect first call for dinner. Yes, and Roma Sherry is delightful later in the evening, too. Glorious, golden, amber Roma Sherry is a happy, mellow wine with natural fragrance. Cream rich with natural grape sugar sweetness and nut-like taste. If you prefer a dry sherry, get Roma California Pale Dry Sherry, famous for its light, nut-like taste. It's a good idea to keep both Roma Sherry types in the house and give your guests their choice. Remember... Because of uniformly fine quality at low cost, 
more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Always insist on Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lee J. Cobb as Scott Turner in The Bet, a play well calculated to keep you in suspense. I knew, if I wouldn't face it then, I knew whom she'd marked for destruction. Because I knew a lot about what kind of woman she was. And it wasn't more than six months before she'd laid her cards on the table. $500,000, Scott. Half a million. And I'm his beneficiary. But if you'll wait, Ada, let me finish the two years. More than 18 months to go. I won't wait. But we'll have our money then. What? $50,000. Anyway, it can't be done. We, we wouldn't get away with it. You haven't even let me tell you how we can. When a man's insured for so much, his death is sure to be investigated, I know. I know, too. And an insurance investigator is thorough. He won't accept your grief, no matter how well you can act. And he won't accept my being here. He'll find out who and why. He'll find out nothing that isn't on the death certificate. Listen to me. Darling, don't force me into this. Listen. Besides malaria, there are two diseases in Trinidad that kill hundreds every year. Typhoid and amoeba histolytica. My dear, please, all our lives... We... Paul's healthy, so he might recover from either one alone. But if he has both together... No, either. No matter how simple you make it, I, I won't... Now, you go to the hospital at least once a week for laboratory supplies? You must have seen where they keep specimens, typhoid, microbes, amoebas. No, Ray. The risk... You won't gamble for these stakes. You'll be rich. You'll be with me. Scott, do you know where they keep the specimens? Ada, you remind me of something. Why don't you answer me? A spider spins a web. Scott! A male spider comes courting her, but before she'll have him, he has to catch a blue fly and bring it to her wrapped in his cell so that she can eat it alive. Scott! Then she accepts her mate. But the next day, she eats him alive. That's a horrible story. You don't really think that I'm... No. I don't suppose I do. You'll get the microbes then, won't you? Won't you, Scott? Ada, let me think about it a little while. Let me at least pretend I'm a man with a conscience. Scott? Oh, Paul, I've... I wasn't expecting you this afternoon. Yes, I know, I know. You were expecting Ada. Well, she's here too. Hello, Scott. Hello. I, uh, I just stopped by for a moment to tell you I, I have to go to Tobago. Tobago? Yes, I have a grinding plant there, and we're installing a new engine. I'll be gone about two days. I told Paul that Tobago in this weather... Oh, yes, you're taking chances, Paul. I take enough adabrin to keep on the right side of malaria. Don't worry, I'll be all right. Yes, but there are other things, typhoid. I've never known you to be so concerned before, Ada. Oh, Paul. Oh, if it weren't for... Uh, Certain other factors, my dear, I'd be touched, believe me. What other factors? I don't want to be sordid, Ada. Surely I don't have to describe a situation you and Scott know better? What do you mean? All right. All right, we'll maintain the cultivated surface, if you wish. Uh, by the way, Scott, how do you feel now about our bet? The same as before, that I'll win it. Yeah, well, perhaps. Lately, I thought the whole thing was a mistake, at least on my part. You want to call it off? I didn't say that exactly. I tell you, we'll, we'll talk about it when I get back, the three of us. I may have a counter-proposal. Paul, you wouldn't All dare. All right. Not... We'll talk about it. Fine, fine. I'll be looking forward to it. Well, Ada? I, I think I'll sit here a while, Paul. It, it's so peaceful now that the rain stopped. Huh. It has stopped. I didn't notice. A truce. A false peace. It'll begin soon again. Well, goodbye, then. Goodbye, Paul. Take care. You heard? You heard what he said? He's a little excited, Ada. It didn't mean anything. Don't be a fool. It means you haven't any choice now. There's always a choice. Well, yes, yes. Now you can choose me with half a million dollars or nothing. Not one red cent. But he didn't say he wouldn't pay. That's what he means. He hates us, both of us. And his only weapon is his money. What a triumph for him to hoax you into slaving here for eight months and then throw you out. Oh, no, he wouldn't dare. Don't you think I know him? You have to do what I say. 
How will you give it to him? The microbes? In his food. It'll only take a drop. Say, in, in caviar, he's a pig for it, like he is about everything else. Caviar, highly seasoned with sauce. You've really planned this. Somebody has to plan. Do you want to? No. no. Well, he'll be home day after tomorrow. He'll ask you to come to the house for tea. I'll give it to him then, so it will look like he caught them in Tobago. Ada, I'm not sure that I can... I'm, I'm not... I am sure. It's the only thing we can do. You love me, Scott. Will you get the specimens from the hospital? Will you? If anyone had told me that I... that I could do... Will you get the specimens, Scott? All right. I'll get them this afternoon. <laughs> That afternoon, the rains had stopped. It was no fall's peace. The season was over, two weeks early. I drove into Port of Spain through a crawling, chalk, white mist, through the strong, heady smell of decaying jungle. And the cessation of sound was enormous in my ears. It was as though the rain had stopped on a shout. I got the specimens, two tiny tubes of dynamically living death. When I stored them away in the laboratory refrigerator, I riveted my mind on Ada's face and her incomparable voice. We can do so much together, Scott. You're a savage like me. Remember how you looked at Shiva that first day? I could tell we're alike. No little stifling moralities. We're beyond such things, you and me. Beyond pity or shame. Yes, quite beyond shame. Or pity. Be very careful, my darling. Eat only the caviar without the sauce. We'll leave all the rest for him. The afternoon Paul Barton came back, I walked to the house he was so proud of. There was a mist still on the ground, but thinning fast. The dry season had begun. The only sound beside my footsteps was the last rainfall dripping from the giant trees and the hushed, mysterious voice of the jungle itself. Ada met me at the door. You can't possibly understand about her face. Vitality isn't the word. There is no word. Her face was the indestructible essence of life. When I saw her, there were no more doubts. She took me into the room where she kept the Hindu gods, where Paul was already sitting over his tea. Oh, hello, Scott. Come in. Well, you did invite me. Oh, of course, but you surprised me again. You're punctual as well as tenacious. Help yourself to tea, Scott. I'll get the caviar. Thanks, Ada. I'm... I'm sorry I disappoint you so often, Paul. Disappoint me? By not conforming to your preconceived portrait of an artist. Oh, that's not where I misjudged. I had a preconceived portrait of the kind of man my wife thinks she wants. She wants a fool and a weakling. Well, I won't sit here and discuss... Here's the caviar, with sauce and without. And some new crackers over from England. Native pastry for you, Scott. You like sweets. Pull out that little table. Uh, I'll do it. Thanks, dear. Uh, you're right, Scott. You're right. We won't discuss that. That's beside the point. We were going to discuss my... Uh, Counterproposal. Oh, Paul, let's not have unpleasantness right away. You assume it's unpleasant, not for me. I just want to say I'm, I'm closing the laboratory. Push the crackers over, Ada. I'd like to hear your reason. The research is no longer necessary, and I want you to leave Trinidad. You're worried about Ada, aren't you? Oh, we are dropping the cultivated surface, aren't we? Well, yes. Ah, <sighs> caviar and sauce. My wife prepares us very well, Scott. Yes. I wonder how well you know her. I know her pretty well. Now you're thinking of the 50,000, of course. Oh, really, Scott, try this. Ada puts everything in it. Did, uh, did I say something? Put it down. What? Put the caviar down, Paul. It's deadly. Scott, you fool. Yes, there's everything in it, including death. Typhoid, amoebas, she prepared it very well. Ada. 
Ada, is this... I'm going to kill you, Scott. I hadn't intended to just yet. I know. Oh, of course, you'd have a gun. How many men have you killed, Ada? How many helpless, hypnotized men have helped you to kill and then have themselves died? How many husbands, lovers... How did you know? I'm not such a romantic figure, Ada. I came here with some previous knowledge of you. You see, I was sent here for a purpose. I didn't meet you by accident. But I didn't know what you'd be like. How much of a spell you and the rain could cast. But it's over. The rains and everything. Yes, I was sent to investigate because of all the insurance. <laughs> An insurance man, how dismal. You don't deserve even the... You... You killed her. You killed her. Yes. I killed her. Yes, I'm haunted. I keep away from rain because she flourishes if it rains too long. She comes back like a dank, strong jungle vine, flowered and perfumed, but tough to the core. She winds herself around me. She tries to drag me once more to that precipice above that darkness. An existence beyond shame or pity or morality. Roma Wines have brought you Lee J. Cobb as star of The Bet. Tonight's study in Suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Here's extra good news for you. You can now enjoy the taste luxury of Roma Wines at the lowest prices in years. Yes, the high quality of Roma Wines is unchanged, as good as ever. But Roma's new low prices enable you to save as much as one-fourth. You can now enjoy Roma wines more often. Roma California wines offer you sherry, port, muscatel, and tokay for entertaining, burgundy and sauterne for mealtime pleasure, and Roma champagne to make any occasion unforgettable. Each of these fine Roma wines brings you the goodness of luscious grapes gathered at peak of flavor, gently pressed, then, unhurriedly, brought to delicious perfection under the patient guidance of Roma's ancient winemaking skill. Bottled at Roma's own famed wineries, located in California's choicest vineyard districts, Roma wines are true wines, always unvaryingly good, now featured by your dealer at new low prices. Always insist on Roma wines. No other wines offer you so much for so little. Roma. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Lee J. Cobb appears through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in his first role since leaving the service, Anna and the King of Siam. Next Thursday, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Zachary Scott in Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California... For enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.